Today we begin the biggest MLB The Show series I've done on this channel. And welcome to the Oakland Athletics franchise. I've been very excited to get this series underway. I've wanted to do franchise over here for a couple of months. And I finally have found the team that I want to build this year. And it is going to be the team that probably has the worst roster, one of the worst farm systems, and the lowest budget in the entire game. I wanted a big challenge with the budget first off, and I really wanted to get back to the American League this year, and wanted to stay out of the American League Central because one of my very few franchises was already in there. When I first booted up MLB The Show 23, I really couldn't believe this was the A's roster, except for it was even worse, because Shintaro Fujinami wasn't on the roster, I had to manually add him onto here. This is the team the A's are going to be fielding here in 2023. MLB.com right now ranks their minor league system as the 22nd best in all of baseball. And their player payroll this season is only $61.3 million. Aled Miss Diaz is the highest paid player on the team. A 77 overall. The best rated player on the team as well. He's a 32 year old shortstop who can play a lot of positions. And he's on like his fourth team. I wanted the challenge with this series and I think we have successfully found it. And if you're excited for the start of this franchise, I'd appreciate it if you left a like on the video. I'm excited to work with the new scouting system in MLB The Show 23. I made a video for that on the channel already, and I definitely need to get familiar with it if we're to build this team. It's really that bad? All those positions are in the red except for two. What if you project outwards with this team? Does it get any better? Not really. If you just sort by potential, there's one A potential player on the whole team, and that is Tyler Soderstrom, a catcher. They also acquired catcher Shea Langoliers in a trade for Matt Olson, a trade that hasn't worked out perfectly for the A's, as I just saw the other day they were going to be designating Christian Pache for assignment, and we'll see what happens there. But this is a team that was in the postseason not very long ago. Back in 2020, they were a division winner in the shortened season. And this was their lineup in their last playoff game against the Astros in that 2020 season. In this starting lineup, only one player remains on the roster today. And that is Ramon Laureano. After a promising start to his career, Laureano has struggled really since the 2019 campaign really failing to get things on track in 2022. The core of this team has been completely broken up. Matt Olson was traded and received a massive contract from Atlanta. The A's now get to play against Marcus Simeon many times a year as a member of the Texas Rangers. Frankie Montas started the last playoff game the A's played in and now is a member of the New York Yankees. This team made the postseason in 2018, 19, and 20, and you might have thought there was a core there that could keep the A's as playoff contenders for years to come. But this is a unique organization. They do not spend a lot of money. And they've become very well known for Billy Bean and his team building tactics around analytics and finding players who were vastly underrated and putting together a team based on the money ball principles well that's no longer going to work in 2023 everybody's got analytics everybody's got the numbers stat cast data is widely available we all love to spend some time on fan graphs that market inefficiency is gone a new rebuilding philosophy is what the Oakland Athletics need, and that's what I'm here to hopefully provide. As we begin a brand new franchise, we are not going to be playing any games today. I wanted to get this introduction video out and show you some of the changes that I have made to the roster and see if there's anything I need to do because I can always start up a brand new franchise file. This one is new but I noticed there were a lot of things that needed some adjusting 
with the base roster, the newest one currently in the game. So I had to download a few players off the vault. So I did add Shintaro Fujinami. I don't know like the data on his pitches or anything yet, but if and when that becomes available soon, I'll edit his pitches and if the velocities are right. He's a 74. I didn't rate him. I just found the most downloaded version of him to add to the A's roster because he wasn't there initially. And neither was pitcher Kodai Senga. So I downloaded him to get him onto the Mets roster. And then he is in the game but was a free agent. And I put outfielder Masataka Yoshida onto the Red Sox. The other big thing I had to do was make sure Fernando Tatis Jr., was on the roster now with the Padres because he isn't due to his suspension. But I downloaded, again, a popular version of him onto the, the roster. I edited the contracts for these players to be accurate to what they received in real life. Yoshida got a massive deal. Senga got one that was pretty big as well. The deal for Fujinami was only a smaller one-year contract, so I really wasn't sure what his ratings should be because if he's only getting $3.3 million, I'm guessing he's not supposed to be a superstar pitcher. 74 is pretty good in this game. They've definitely adjusted the ratings scale because you have a lot of good players who are much lower overall than I would typically expect, like Luis Arise for the Miami Marlins now. But I love the challenge of a good rebuild, and I've been excited to get a big baseball series on this channel, and you're going to experience this series in many ways. If you follow my Rockies franchise from the main channel, you'll have an idea of what a lot of this is going to look like. Along with the Vikings franchise I do over here on Madden. Now in this series, the focus is not going to be on watching the CPU play out games like I do with the Vikings. I'm going to be playing in this series. We'll play full games, player lock games with anybody I think is important for a storyline or whatever it is we're focused on at that point of the season. Critical situations. I'll try to be creative with how I make episodes so that we can get through seasons in quick enough fashion while also getting around to focusing on the players that we want to and getting a chance to learn about this team and watch them grow throughout the series. There are a lot of reasons why I picked the Oakland Athletics. I am also excited about the possibilities of building them a brand new stadium, and I'd like to do one that's completely custom on my own, and I'd like to possibly debut that in year two if I can get something nice created. The A's stadium situation has been a big topic of conversation, and there's been so much talk about the A's leaving Oakland to likely Las Vegas, just like the Raiders did. Now, I thought about moving the A's for this series, but when you try to do a custom team in this game, or like rebrand a team, it requires you to design logos and uniforms and you can't just use what's already there and make minor adjustments i was originally going to move them to san jose and then work on a new stadium but i think i'm keeping them in oakland for this series because i also would lose access to a pretty good catalog of uniforms i really like their alternates i've always liked oakland's uniforms so if i did a rebrand i think you only get a home and away version so i'd lose that there are a handful of teams in Major League Baseball that are known for kind of being cheaper organizations and not spending a lot of money. But what's unique about the A's situation is that they don't play in a division where other teams are kind of operating the same way. They face the LA Angels, who have maybe the two best players in baseball, Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. This is a team that does spend money. They don't win. But they do try by spending money. They got Mike Trout, Shohei Otani. For now, we'll see what happens after he's set to be a free agent in 2024. They brought in World Series hero Anthony Rendon. This signing has not worked out for them. But this is a team that tries and will continue to try. They're an LA team. They're going to spend money. How about the Rangers? Like the entire top of this roster is brand new as of the last couple of years with big money 
given to guys like Jacob deGrom, who makes a little over half of the entire Athletics player payroll. Marcus Simeon signed a massive deal there the year prior. This is a team desperate to put fans in the seats of their new stadium. And then you have a franchise that has struggled for a bulk of their existence that is now starting to turn the corner. The Seattle Mariners are a force to be reckoned with in the American League West. Julio Rodriguez is a superstar for them. Luis Castillo, Teoscar Hernandez, Logan Gilbert, a lot of really good players on this team. And of course, they were a playoff team last year. Oh, and not to mention the defending World Series champions and one of the best teams over the last 10 years, the Houston Astros. I don't have to go into too much detail on how good this team is and has been with their ability to find and develop homegrown superstars. And even after losing a handful of those players, they managed to put the pieces back together for a World Series championship just last year. For so many reasons, the Oakland Athletics are arguably the toughest team to take into franchise in this game from their budget, which is the only one in the game that's under $100 million, to their weak farm system, to their AAA-esque big league roster. I can't wait to get started and completely change this organization. Why don't we dive a bit into this team now in Oakland and what we'll have to work with in the start of our journey. Aledmus Diaz is the number one player on the roster. He is a 32-year-old who can play a lot of positions. I love the versatility and a balanced skill set with defense, contact, power. I mean, he's a good player to have, I think, on most teams. Maybe shouldn't be the best player on your entire roster, but that's the situation we're in. Seth Brown is 30 years old, second best player on the team, first base, outfield. He's got power. Does a really good job against right-handed pitchers. 25 home runs last year, 20 the year prior. And then you go down to Zach Jackson, and you'll notice the top players on this team, they're not exactly the youngest players with a ton of years to reach this really high potential. Zach Jackson, though, 28 years old, only has... Only has one short year of Major League experience, but appeared in 54 games and only allowed one home run in 48 innings last year. So with a high K per nine, extremely low home run per nine, that's a good player to have in the bullpen. Ramon Laureano. Can he find that form he had a couple years ago and he hit 24 home runs, hit 288. And on top of that, played really good defense. I don't know about that, but he is one of the better players we have and thankfully still is a pretty good defender. Shintaro Fujinami comes over from Japan and he immediately gets a big role in this rotation. He's one of the best starting pitchers already on the roster. Now, I was doing some research on the A's and their current like 40-man roster and the moves they've been making recently, so I did manage to get Jauri's Familia onto the roster. He was signed within the last few days. I also saw they're expected to be putting out Kyle Muller as their opening day starter at 68 overall. I'm not sure what the situation is with Paul Blackburn, their lone all-star in 2022. I saw that here in the spring. He has not put together a very good spring training. And in the one game I played against him just a couple days ago on the channel, I really enjoyed hitting against him. Also part of this rotation, we have Ken Waldachuk and James Caprillian. I think we're going to be relying a lot on our bullpen. And Hogan Harris is supposed to be at AAA, I believe. I'll have to make probably a couple more small tweaks to the roster. I wanted to be as close to opening day as I could, but like, it's not like the NFL where teams just set their rosters and it's like nice and not a whole lot of movement happens after the 53s are set. You get a few claims, but MLB, it's like, just have 26 by opening day. 
So, Zach Jackson is here, probably going to be our closer, it looks like. And pretty good K per nine, hit per nine ratings. You got Trevor May, the veteran. And I hope that we can find a few players here that can be reliable for us. Domingo Acevedo only has a year of Major League service time, and it looks like 58 strikeouts and 67 innings, nine homers allowed. Definitely good enough to be part of this rotation and get uh, a lot of innings. If we look at the entire starting rotation, there's like a little over five years of combined Major League experience. This is a very inexperienced team. They're not the most talented team either. I cannot wait to just completely change everything the Oakland A's have. If we sort by potential, there is Tyler Soderstrom, and I think he could find himself up with uh, the big league squad relatively early in our journey. Looks like he'll have a pretty good, well-rounded bat. Okay, fielder. Might even be a, a DH option for us, depending on how things shake out. Shea Langoliers came over in that trade for Matt Olson, And... Looks like his uh, defense, you know, there's a good arm, but 43 fielding, I'm worried about that. Hit six home runs last season. Looks like he's still uh, got his rookie status intact. Christian Pache, I don't even know what's going to happen here. He hit 166 last year in 91 games with an ISO of 075. So a lot of things there to be concerned about. Some of these guys that are 65 overall are probably a couple of years away, and hopefully we can spend some time in the minors to get to know them and track their progress. Gunnar Hogland is one option here, 23 years old, starting pitcher, that hopefully develops into uh, an option for us. Got J.J. Blade. I've at least heard of him before, and he has a little bit of pop in his bat, plays the outfield. Played last year a bit with Miami, but definitely needs some more development before he's back up in the big leagues. I have to fix a few things on this MLB roster, but one player I do think will be on the MLB roster early in this series is Lawrence Butler. He only has C potential, but he looks to be really good in the field, has some power in his game, and there's an easy argument that he is in like the top 26 players on this roster entirely, so... I think he'll find himself up there. I saw that uh, Connor Cappell, I think, is on the big league squad right now. So I'll start out with what they have the best that I can. And if there is anything that I have missed here that is, you know, big, I know not every player is like on the game, but if it's just like a random backup, I'm not as concerned about that. I wanted to make sure, you know, we had Tatis in the game, that Senga was in the game. And for us here on the A's, I, of course, wanted to make sure we had our uh, opening day roster mostly intact and Shintaro Fujinami. I am not planning on using the sponsorships feature either. I feel like I want to feel the challenge of the budget the A's have, and I don't want this to make it any easier. I enjoyed in my Rockies franchise how the more successful we got, the more our budget went up. And I want to just have this challenge. I have not had a team this constrained when it comes to budget. And there aren't any big contracts anywhere on this roster. So this really is a blank template team. Just one that has a very low budget. And we're going to have to employ the Moneyball 2.0 strategy. And I have some ideas for what that entails. Here are my focuses for trying to get this team competitive one day. First off, we're likely not going to be in a position to go and sign big name free agents and the flashiest players. And while much of the league is trying to hit as many home runs as possible, we probably have to build our team in a very different way, focusing more on contact and speed. I also want to put an emphasis on getting switch hitters onto the team to allow us to have the platoon advantage as much as possible. I'd like to focus our drafting on core players with emphasis on speed, defense, and contact. 
when it comes to the power elements, you know, looking at budget and what you have to do, my thought is buy low on guys who have shown power in the past, but have struggled recently. Think of players like Joey Gallo, who will play in Minnesota this year for around $10 million. And when it comes to pitching, we're going to put an emphasis on keeping the ball in the ballpark, putting the ball on the ground, and guys who can just control. If we're to put together a winning team with this kind of a budget against the competition we have in this division, we're going to have to get really good at the things that the rest of baseball values less. We're also going to have to constantly be trying to get young and boost up the farm system and be using the trade deadline while we're rebuilding very strategically and sending away players who are having a breakout year but might not be in our long-term plans and trying to get prospects. I'm not sure exactly what to expect with this team. If we're successful, does the budget go up enough? If we have some really good players, do we have the ability to sign them long-term? I think any long-term deal we end up making has very little room for error. We cannot be spending any of our budget or a major portion of our budget on players who are not making a massive difference for us. I'm excited to see what this franchise turns into. It's a challenge, I think, very unique even from my Rockies franchise, where they are a team that, you know, plays with the big dogs. They had to get completely rebuilt. In this situation, we have a team that might not give us a budget to be as active in free agency. It's going to put a lot of emphasis on our ability to scout and develop the right players, to trade for the right prospects, and to find those veterans in free agency that turn into steals of the offseason. Now, if I check out this menu, we do have a lot of money available in our budget, but we're so bad right now that handing out a big contract to literally anybody will not change the fact that we are one of the worst teams in baseball. So we may end up with a budget around $120 million next year, which is still going to be one of the lower budgets in baseball. But at the very least, we don't have money tied up into our future. There isn't a big contract weighing us down. This is a team that has hit the reset button over the last few years. And maybe now we can finally get this team on the right track for their next chapter. So with that, everybody, I hope you're ready for the Oakland Athletics franchise. We got opening day against the LA Angels and Shohei Otani. Really excited to get this underway and hopefully find a new standout series here for this channel. I love your feedback down below and let me know if there's anything I need to do and maybe restart the franchise file because I forgot about something or if I didn't, then I can get right into things, set our roster for opening day and get ready to take this team against the Angels. Please leave a like if you're looking forward to the Oakland Athletics franchise. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'm planning to do a lot of stuff in this franchise. And I'm looking forward to seeing your feedback down in the comments. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you again soon.